Here's your map for the daily geography this week. It is a map of the St. Lawrence Seaway. The St. Lawrence Seaway is a famous water route that connects the Atlantic Ocean to the St. Lawrence River. So if you follow the Atlantic Ocean up north, there's the Gulf of St. Lawrence and it comes down into the St. Lawrence Seaway and then the St. Lawrence River. The St. Lawrence River then the seaway connects these five great lakes right here. So the seaway is a, a connection of system canals and locks all through the Great Lakes between the two countries of Canada and the United States. Canada is to the north of this seaway. The United States is to the south of this seaway. Here's a color image of what it looks like coming from the Atlantic Ocean into the Gulf of St. Lawrence and then into the St. Lawrence River. And you can see how this connects all these great lakes to each other. All these little connections here are canals that connect each great lake to the other so that you can get all the way over to Lake Superior and the very farthest west port called Duluth. You, this picture you can also see an image of Canada, the country to the north, and the United States, the country to the south. Here is another image of the St. Lawrence Seaway coming from the Atlantic Ocean into the St. Lawrence River. You can see these little dots along the way, and the dots are ports. A port is where a ship would stop and be able to unload materials or load more materials to be able to take them to another port. This map also shows you a good um, division between the two countries, Canada and the green up here. The United States is the yellow, and you can see the St. Lawrence Seaway in between that then leads into the five different Great Lakes. So let's go back to our main map for daily geography. You can see this ship down below that is full of all kinds of cargo. The ships on the St. Lawrence Seaway carry about 50 million short tons of cargo every year. Most of the cargo travels from Canada in the United States to countries in Europe, and the cargo usually consists mostly of grain, coal, oil, and iron ore. Let's take a look at some of the ports along the way that the ships might stop at. As they come in or out, they might stop at this port, Quebec, which is on the Canada side, Montreal, which is on the Canada side. As you come through here, here's Lake Ontario. This port, Buffalo, is part of New York, so they might stop at that port. That's part of the United States. But on the other side, that port is Toronto, which part is part of Canada. So as the ships are bringing in goods and supplies, they could deliver to the Canada side or the American side. Here's another port down here, Cleveland. This is a port on the United States side. As you come through here, Detroit. Detroit might be another port that they would unload supplies, and that is actually in the state of Michigan right there. It would come up through Lake Huron, and it could unload in the port of um, St. Marie, and this would be a Canada port or it could come down Lake Michigan and unload at the Chicago port, or Thunder Bay, which is part of Canada, a Canada port, or Duluth, which would be part of the United States port. You can see the division right here between Canada and the United States. And the last part we're going to look at is you can see as you're coming between these Great Lakes, these little bitty lines right here. These are canals with locks in them. You can see another canal here with locks. 
And all that means is the canals with locks are um, canals where they have gates, where they can close the gates when the ships come in and raise or lower the water level so the ship can pass on to the next waterway. Use this map to be able to answer your questions. Pay attention to your legend. The dots are the port cities, and these little dashed lines are the border between Canada and the United States. So here's your border right here. You can see the border there and right there.